Next up, we're moving straight up to Yorkshire and Leeds Museums and Gallery. Sarah Merritt is going to talk through their recent three displays. Thanks, Jack. You've got um, Leeds is the greatest city in the world, um, but that was fine. Um, Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm an audience development officer, I'm not a scientist. Um, I do marketing and stuff. Um, so I'm talking to you quickly about our redisplay project at Leeds City Museum. Um, it's one of eight sites that we look after at Leeds Museums and Galleries. Um, and it was a project to make the gallery a little bit more green. Um, so to give you a bit of background, um, the gallery was initially created in 2008 um, with capital funding and um, as Jack keeps telling me, that's not a long time ago, but I Googled earlier and the iPhone was only created in 2007, so a lot's changed since then. Um, but it wasn't really doing justice to our collections and nor was it really telling a contemporary story. Um, so what did we do? Um, we wanted to sort of, we had three objectives. Um, first, to manage and deliver the project in the most sustainable way possible. Um, we very rarely, as I'm sure most museum people are in the same position, refit a permanent gallery. Um, but we knew we had to update the space to better represent our contemporary understanding of climate, biodiversity and colonialism. And we wanted to measure our carbon output to create a tool which could do that for our temporary and permanent exhibitions across our eight sites and for the wider sector. Secondly, it needed to be relevant for now and for the future. It seems obvious, but we needed to identify why it was important that we took on this responsibility. Um, why would people care and why would we take the risks? As a free civic museum, we have a hugely disparate audience and we're constantly trying to please everybody all of the time. In my role in developing audiences, I know that that's an impossible task. We needed to be more confident in our target audiences. We needed to attract people who wanted to do better for everyone's future and own it confidently through our application of design and interpretation. And third, it needed to be tough. It needed to potentially last another decade, two decades, however long it was before we might be given another fiver. Um, so, you know, and uh, people seem to think that museums are there to be pulled apart. I literally saw someone touching something in the gallery earlier that they weren't supposed to, and I nearly went up and said something, but I didn't. Um, so what did we do? We kept everything small, um, our team of three-ish, a couple of people left, it wasn't mine and Claire's fault, um, they, they just had other jobs. Um, our budget was about 40k um, and we closed the gallery on and off-ish for three weeks. Um, it was managed alongside our day jobs, you know, small violin, but I know that that's common practice um, and that made it slightly trickier for us to do. Um, in, in addition to that, the money needed to spend by the end of the financial year, and we decided to do this in like March, um, which was really smart. Um, and then we also had like school bookings, visitor targets, all that usual jazz to hit. Uh, so we couldn't afford to close the gallery for any longer, and it all felt a little bit risky. But it meant that decisions by committee were avoided. We were forced to think creatively about how we could stretch the budget while sticking to our sustainable principles. And when we inevitably ran over time, we turned it in an into an opportunity to have our visitors put the new materials and the layout to the test. Um, and for me in marketing, it gave me a nice opportunity to play with the idea that evolution takes time um, and to have a chance to look at behind the scenes whilst we were furiously re-sticking the PVC free vinyl, which by the way, doesn't work. Um, so we, um, so what we did, I've skipped ahead, sorry guys, um, we avoided waste, um, and the creation of a brand new display element by reusing, sprucing up with recycled paint, and we worked largely remotely with an agency that specialised in sustainable design, found local company which recycled film canisters and textile cones into furniture, a wood recycling organisation who took away our excess and provided us with pieces we needed to create our new display areas. Um, we changed all the light into LED, boring. Um, we got our staff involved in carbon literacy training and generally tried, to, you know, they needed to be on board with the idea of um, sharing the story with our visitors. Going back to that, is that our responsibility? Anything new that we needed was created using low carbon, recycled and or plastic free materials. And finally, this is the more complicated bit. 
We work with the colleagues at the University of Leeds to, universe, to utilize their research on encouraging environmentally conscious behavior change, as well as community focus groups to ensure that the gallery and its narratives were accessible and empowering for our visitors. And we measured our carbon output. Um, we used a company called the Useful Simple Trust. They're an umbrella company and within that sat design agency, um, production teams, um, consultants. Um, and they were very used to doing projects of this nature. Um, so we wanted to establish a best practice baseline of our carbon emissions from retrofitting an exhibition. And because the same company were delivering the design, the analysis was also able to identify a likely carbon footprint under a business as usual scenario, where a selection of materials would not have been subject to in-depth environmental considerations. This allowed us to give us a benchmarking of the savings created. Um, and with that, we created a carbon calculator as part of the process, which now allows us to carry out assessments on future exhibitions and designs. The carbon calculator considered everything from comms to utilities, travel to production, and established a complete inventory of all the materials used. Um, the provided data was then matched with carbon conversion factors from the most appropriate available resources, consisting of a recognized lifecycle inventory databases, environmental product declarations, academic research, as well as industry publications. For recycled and reused materials, a factor of 0 0.5 was applied to the carbon factors to allow for the embodied carbon to be allocated across at least one previous application. And where materials were prevented from going to waste, like offcuts, their carbon footprint was considered negative due to them avoiding emissions from incineration or landfilling. So our trials and triumphs. We're eight chuffed. That means we're really happy in Yorkshire. Um, we've got a really dedicated and passionate bunch of staff and visitors who have told us they're really proud to work in the gallery. I also have like audience data, but that's really boring. Um, and the school kids are back in their droves. Um, they're testing its robustness daily, sometimes terrifyingly. Um, and we're confident that we're affecting change for future generations to benefit from. In terms of the total net CO2, um, it was approximately 2,300 kilograms. That's about a 40% reduction on an ordinary refit. Is anyone here from the Design Museum? I doubt it. Um, so it was, that was such shade on the Design Museum, sorry. Um, but they produced an exhibition called the Waste Age Exhibition, and it was 23% carbon emissions of their exhibition. Um, I do have the full report. I'm very happy to email it around to everybody. It's got some really good um, summaries and takeaways on there and things that you can do quite easily. Um, but more importantly, we created this carbon calculator, which we can use across a range of areas and organisations. And we're pretty pleased with our out of necessity small team and budget works in practice because that's the reality of the sector. There's no magic money pot. We're unlikely to increase our staff to lessen the load and we are gonna to have to take more risks and be responsible for decisions that feel over our heads and then just do it and ask for forgiveness later. The trials, obvious stuff, we overran. Um, we found that some sustainable PVC free vinyl materials were absolutely not four year old proof. And we had to test the internal case label material again and again and again to, show, to ensure it didn't off gas, but it did. So we went back to what we know. Um, we couldn't get hold of Wombat Poo for love nor money. No thanks to Jack. Um, you can buy them as plushy toys at the rate pound 50 on Etsy. Um, and our plan to in install some quite clever additional like tiered seating in the gallery has been delayed because of access requirements through the delightful Leeds City Council who have yet to provide us with an alternative solution. Um, so we're work working remotely with the design and build team also resulted in some questionable measurements from myself um, and the visitor assistants spotted a few major typos, made a bet on how long Pooh Corner would last our interactive for children and me and Claire. Um, and it had to be fixed at least once a day for probably two months until we got it right. Um, but the project got us thinking about sustainability on a broader level. Um, and it just going back to it being everyone's responsibility, because if we want to do what we're really good at doing, we need to be developing more realistic, sustainable practices, but recognizing what we're already doing and sharing that, the good and the bad. Sustainability is about keeping it simple, taking some risks and knowing that whatever form it takes, it will benefit you personally if positive changes are made. I've got a few little photos to show you of the gallery before and after. 
it's not particularly um, radical, but it's kind of the point. Um, I apologise for the first two. I didn't take them. Uh, that's why they're really pixelated, because they're not taken by someone in marketing. Exactly. <laughs> um, I totally did that on purpose because I knew it would get a rise out of you. Excellent. Um, also, at the end of this, there's a couple of photos of our cafe because we decided to do that at the same time. So stupid. So this is before um, Army Hippo. And then we took great pleasure in smashing this disgusting thing down. Um, and then the refit. So it's more pared back. It's just a bit slicker. Poo Corner is delightful. Um, we did get one back poo, don't worry. This is our recycled furniture. Um, and then the cafe, which oh, was dire. Um, and we used our herbarium collection and created some wallpaper, which I now want in my house. Um, so yeah, we're really pleased with it. Um, so that's my wrap up. Visit us, because I'd be remiss not to say that. Um, take some risks, we're a risk adverse sector um, and practice sustainability wherever you can. Thank you.